relieve oneself on another person's grave, albeit a gang member. And I've got this text through from Brett, which I'll share with you. Sean, I apologise for my P comment. I just hate the people who kill our kids and rip families apart with their filthy government subsidised drug peddling businesses. That is Brett from Hamilton, and I think that is an appropriate response, Brett. Um, your apology, um, albeit pointed, is uh, noted and appreciated. Thank you. Um, well, we all, don't we, a comeback story. We all like the underdog. And indeed, at the platform, we're rather, we're rather fond of comeback stories. And if there is one looming on the political horizon for next year, it must be the possible return of New Zealand First which is certainly sniffing at around the 5% mark in opinion polls, and with a year where its exposure is likely to increase, um, one would be a fool, as one always is, to write off the possible reincarnation return of Winston Raymond Peters, the leader of the New Zealand First Party, And for that reason, I thought he would be a very good, our final politician of the year on the platform. I thought it would be good to have a chat to Winston. We hope we have solved the technical difficulties which have plagued our relationship in recent months. Probably our fault. Winston, are you there? Can you hear me? I can most definitely hear you. And I got the pun when you said uh, the apology, albeit pointed, is accepted. Do you not realise how... (laughs) (laughs) Yes, uh, yes, I do. But Winston, let's just start there. Let's just start there. We live in a world where the mongrel mob are going to the Human Rights Commission and to our courts to argue for the right to have basically anti-social Nazi iconography on headstones in public cemeteries. How did we come to this? Well, we've come to this because over the years, and uh, that informant of yours was right, they started off as a European organisation because it required certain uh, assets for them to have, such as motorbikes. And what Mara in the old days could afford a motorbike, but it's changed over the years. But here's the point. Every time some abysmal abuse of humanity happens on their behalf, uh, all of Mara feels it on TV that night, and the shame of it all is a disgrace. And far too many people in power on this country don't understand the disconnection between ordinary law abiding Maori and those who would abuse their reputation day in, day out, 24 you 7, know, so to speak. Well, in that interview, understand. I'm told it's my fault because I stole land off the guy. I'm pretty sure I didn't. Uh, that's kind of nonsense that uh, people will talk because every excuse they've got is so lousy, but it doesn't explain this in a family of sometimes seven or eight children. There are one of, there's one offender and the other seven are law-abiding. How do they explain that if colonialism and all their sociological work excuses are actually a fact? Mm. Do we not have, though, a society which encourages this right now? A bureaucracy and people in government who have embraced the idea of post-colonial guilt and the idea of needing to positively discriminate for one specific group in society, isn't this really just the way that New Zealand is now and there is no going back from the woke, dystopian nightmare we live in? That is not the way New Zealand is now. That's the way New Zealand is being taken by some people without any mandate, without any authority. This critical race theory they're teaching in our schools, a reversion of a read a vision of history itself it, c- coming into our schools. All this gaslighting against anybody who's got an alternative view or the deceit around that and all this virtue signaling, mainly coming out of what you sometimes would think would be a pretty loose and hopeless uh, sociology department lecture at university being taken as being the reality of life. No, that's not the way New Zealand is, that's not what way we want to go. But a whole lot of people have gone to power and because of the lack of guts, courage or fortitude, or worse still, the misunderstanding of history of some politicians, this is being allowed to persist and stop it must. Some would say, Winston, that you're partly responsible for this. You put Jacinda in as Prime Minister. You weren't sharp enough to pick up what they were doing with Hipuapua, which seems to be the document that forms the basis of a lot of the uh, issues that we are dealing now with race. Don't you feel that in some ways um, you didn't keep 
the Labor Party honest. You dropped the ball, and that's why why we're in the mess we are in now. I hate in this Yuletide period, and you know what Yuletide is, it's a yep. period around Christmas, to provide you with a discordant answer based on the fact that I will. Who signed up to the United Nations Declaration on Indigenous Rights? John Key did. I stopped it when I was the Foreign Minister, but he signed up to it. Who uh, got rid of the foreshore and seabed legislation that we put up in New Zealand first, which settled the matter? Well, John Key and Chris Thompson did. And who started the Waikato River Authority and co-governance there on the river? John Key did. Now, that's the background before anybody forgets history. And when I was there between 2017 and 20, we stopped all that to the extent that they had to do it in secret, behind closed doors. Commissioned Hay Pua Pua in 19, 2019 secretly and brought it out December after the 2020 election. Please don't say that I wasn't a serious handbrake because that's all the media said I was mm. when I was doing great things for this country. After the election was over, they having taken all the credit off, been given to by your mainstream colleagues, all the credit, we've seen what a disaster with our handbrake and experience that they actually are, and that's a fact. That's the great news for Christmas. Your eyes are open now, and to blame me for an election where 400,000 National Party people would, of course, the political divide and vote for Labour in 2020 is just so wrong and beneath somebody so experienced in politics as you. All right, I'll take I'll take the hit, Winston. It's absolutely soul destroying. Um, I, I think you've just laid out where you think the fertile ground is for you next year. There were a bunch of people in the 2020 election who scared out of their wallets by a crazy strategy by Judith Collins to make people afraid of a wealth tax from the Green Party. She convinced died in the will blue voters in farmlets and rural centres all over this country to vote for Labour for the first time in their lives. I think most of them now regret it and they're not going to vote Labour again are you saying to them you don't have to go back to national? Well, who put in the first capital gains tax of recent times? John Key did. Who was the guy that stopped in the advance on that? Winston Peters was. You all know that. Mm. We stopped the national, but uh, uh, Grant Robinson and just ended up doing it when we were in government. But I don't know why so many national voters, sad to say, have got no memory. Or was it because the media have no memory of what went on here? So when you say, uh, am I looking at fertile ground? Well, it is fertile ground because, frankly, there's a huge part in this country that is called the centre. And, and what we've got is a serious extremism uh, being imaged as politics in this country. I mean, the Green Party, with the greatest respect to them, some of their stuff is off the planet. Mm. We would have to start walking everywhere. I would see people freezing, poverty-stricken, but they're just off the planet. And then, of course, there's a number of Labour like that as well who just got no connection. It's as though they've never, they don't even know how the school tuck shop works. Mm. No connection with business whatsoever. And across the other divide, I have to tell you, there are some worrying aspects. And, of course, as you know, most, uh, the most honest thing in life is grey. The, tr the truth is often just grey. There's no right, there's no wrong. Mm. But it's the extremism that concerns people. And the sad thing about New Zealand going to 2023, we cannot afford a day longer of this Labour government. That's a fact. But we must get much better going forward. Mm -hmm. We can't just be, it's our turn, it's our turn now. You know, uh, the country worst job in the last government. That sort of stuff has seen us in a decline for far too long. We've got to turn this thing around dramatically as I've seen in other countries. All right. Um, do you trust National, who say they will repeal Three Waters, Though Chris Luxon does not seem to really want to engage on the issue of co-governance or the Treaty of Waitangi, and let's be frank, the issue of race as perceived in our society, Luxon just seems to me to want to go to McDonald's, serve an ice cream and say he's learning to rayo. Um, do you think he needs to be kept honest? <laughs> Look, I'm going to give a guy a break. But I'm, I don't know Chris Luxton that very well. I've only met him in business sense when he was running in New Zealand. Uh, and then I met him uh, a couple of times uh, since then on uh, like the field days and what have you. So rather than hear what everybody else thinks he, he believes, I'd like to talk to him about what he believes. Because frankly, at the moment, there's so much 
uh, journalistic imaging of p political personalities, which in some cases are just a downright lie. These journalists are biased, biased in the extreme, and they're imaging and painting the picture which cannot be resourced by the facts. So what I'm saying in coming to 2023, I'd rather talk to the guy and find out for myself what he stands for, rather than what everybody tells me he does or does not stand for. Mm. Well, you started the year, Winston, with this court thing hanging over you. That seems to have cleared up. Is there any outgoing litigation involving the party at the moment? Well, we just didn't win once. We won on the 29th of September 2020 when we knocked the, the SFO for a, a row of you-know-what. Yeah. And then we did it again on the 22nd of July this year, and we never got one line in the media about our victory. We got telephone books of allegations about us by the media, but when we won, the dirt and filth of this organisation, the mainstream media, showed up. No coverage whatsoever. We won three other, two other big cases this year of, of constitutional importance as well. Yeah, uh, and the case away? against no. Mallard. Are they going to go away? Yeah. Uh, yeah yes. Are they going to go away? No, I can tell you the certainty of New Zealand's first rise in support is going to be accompanied by the same dirt and filth of past times. But this time, we're going to take action against those on day one. Yeah. Uh, the money is back. You've got people read it willing to back you. I take that as a uh, suggestion that you're going to send me a check. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez, the world loves an optimist, Winston. They really do. Um, There'll come a time soon you'll need yeah, me more than yeah. you. All right. Um, and look, it does seem to me that your brand of politics and your style of politics is perfectly made for the world and for the election that we are facing in 2023. But there is a difference, and that is conversations with the early conversations we had here on the platform and reportage and other media suggest that for the first time, campaigning as New Zealand First, you are not going to have, and I don't know if it's an advantage or disadvantage, it has always been part of the narrative of a Winston Peters New Zealand First election campaign. You paint yourself as the kingmaker, he can go either way, therefore he remains relevant. I think most media now say that you have pretty well categorically ruled out dealing with the Labour Party as it is currently constituted, you have said that, that Jacinda Ardern has misled and lied to you and you cannot see yourself doing a deal with a Jacinda Ardern-led Labour Party post-election. Is that no, a I fair... I, I, I didn't put it that way. I said there's no chance we'll ever have a, a coalition with them in the future because of the way they acted in the past. Wow. Their behaviour was absolutely unacceptable. Now, look, we're a year on, you're still asking the same stupid question. Yeah, but we Move just on. want we want to nail you yeah. down, Winston, because believe no, it or no, not, no, no, some no. people think you speak with a forked tongue. Well, I don't... You might say that. Go and ask Jim Bolger and Ellen Clark yeah. that I speak with a forked tongue. Yeah. Go, go, go to experts yeah. who know me, not party partisan enemies yeah. who have never supported me and never will. Yeah. Um... Winston, what about Shane Jones? What about the others around you? And I know, while some people say you're a one-man band, I know that you can attract capable politicians who can get, become very enthused about being New Zealand First members. Um, do you have others around you? Is it going to be a one-man band? Or are we going to see uh, some developments in terms of broadening, if you like, who's campaigning? Look, you're going to have to drop the old political epithets, one-man band. No party's a one-man band that's been around for 30 years, for goodness sake. And we've been had more, decisions, more power in political politics than any new in, in party politics and governments than any new party. And we've got a whole lot of people lined up, highly talented, highly qualified people who have got experience who've been in business, not people who, for example, like Prime Minister uh, Robinson and, and Hippens have spent less than three months at any job. Together, that is. No, mm. people have been out in the real world and know what New Zealand's situation and, and the economy yeah. and the ordinary people's life look like. Obviously. We've got a huge list and a whole lot of people lining up. Yeah. Obviously, with the recession predicted uh, and almost a designed recession, uh, the economy is going to play a large part in the political narrative next year. But it would seem to me, and I'm interested in your views on this, that there are other fundamental things in our society which are very much worthy of debate 
and if you like, driving an election and the issue of co-governance, the issue of the role of the Treaty of Waitangi, <laughs> the issue of hate speech and freedom of speech are still very important issues, the recession notwithstanding. So what, to your mind, are going to be the definitive issues in next year, election year? Look, you outlay the, the main one, the economy, as they say, will be much worse than the media, and I dare say so many economists are saying. It'll be deeper here, it'll be worse here, it'll take many years to get out of. And these illness should be warned about that right here and right now. Uh, but there are all those other issues, such as you say, three waters, the inverse racism that has kept its way to legislation, which in itself is actually saying to Mari, you can't perform, so we're going to put you on a special shelf because we are better than you. That's the Senator Ardern approach, which is inverse racism in the extreme. They don't understand what they're doing yet, but that's going to be a huge issue. But I hope in this election we don't have 200 issues, but we get six issues or seven issues fixed up in the next three years after this. We need to do it and really fast. Uh, but I suppose if you would ask me what's the number one, one the most important issue, yeah. uh, which is not going to be addressed, it is to turn this country from being a mediocre economic performer to a much wealthier country, which it once were. Because when that happens, our lifestyles in this country can be so much safer and so much better. Mm. We've got to keep it to back to the, not at number 33 and falling. This is not good. Yeah. Um, I have to ask you, Winston, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, as God's my witness, uh, you seem to have a longevity and an enthusiasm for this game, uh, which uh, just on a personal level is bloody remarkable. Have you ever since Have you ever since 2020 sat there and almost come to the point, stuff this for a game of soldiers. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm hanging up the boots and, and I'm gonna, uh, oh, by the way, really sorry to hear about Bo, the dog. I know how that is. But did you ever, uh, he looked like a lovely dog. Have you ever just thought maybe I won't come back? Funny to say about Bo, I've never thought I'd miss a dog so much, but we, we do. Mm. And every time the garage door goes up, I wait to see him walk out and read us and all that sort of stuff. So I will get over it. But the other thing is, um, yes, I did think about that. But I tell you, I'm so alarmed at how so naked and politically designed the Labour Party and the Green Party's approach and to party Māori's approach has been. How naked and underhand and deceptive it's been. And any chance of um, sitting back and saying, I'll just retire and go fishing, when you when you worry about what's going to happen to your country and more important, what's going to happen to the people of this country, particularly and Māori as well, because of the name that's been used to get all these, uh, how shall I say it, mismatches of political policies is a terrible thing. I cannot possibly stand aside in that concept. I'm not trying to be big nerd and what have you, but I made up my mind one time, and particularly as coming into the 22nd of July when we knocked the SFO for a row of shit and excuse the language, but we did. Yeah. And, and but what a bunch of hopeless clowns they are. But here's the point. The moment that was over, I made up my mind, we're going to do something about this country. You just can't walk off in the sunset because you'd be spending all your time. Uh, I hate having political discussions or coffee bar discussions which we all know about our university days. When you sit around and have all these discussions and nothing happens, you've got to get off your backside and do something, and that's what we've got to do. That uh, isn't a bad philosophy, and I, I, I kind of know what, what, what you're talking about, uh, uh, Winston. Look, I'm going to end with asking you a question because this is the issue today. Do you think that gang insignia should be allowed on headstones in public cemeteries? The gang insignia should be outlawed. Right. We'll stop. Everywhere. Yeah. They won't happen their own homes, fine, but not in public. Yep. Good on you. Hey, Winston, Merry Christmas uh, to you and yours. Thank you for your time and your appearances this year. And wonderful. We seem to have the technical problem solved. So we will talk again in the new year. <laughs> I thought it might be long stuff and you guys would come around and fix things. Yeah. But thank you very much. All the best to you guys and above all your viewers. Thank you very much. Uh, Kakiti Ano. That is Winston Peters, the leader of New Zealand First and. Look, he hasn't cracked 5% in a political poll yet, but I think he will. And it's amazing what happens in political narrative and amongst the public um, when that happens. I'm going to be honest, will he get there? 
I don't know. I don't know. But he'll give it a damn good crack. Um, <laughs> love him or hate him. Love him or hate him. He's part of the story. He is part of the story.